Recently, I got the chance to read Nightwing Fear State, and my gosh, the writer of the story arc, Tom Taylor, really nails it when it comes to depicting Nightwing as a positive masculine role model. In this video, I'm going to briefly go over the Nightwing Fear State story arc and what makes Nightwing a pretty much perfect masculine leader. But before we move on, please be sure to like and subscribe to Reverb Comics. You do not want to miss out on our awesome content. I should also mention that I'm not going to get into this whole internet rabbit hole on toxic masculinity, the dating landscape, and whatever Andrew Tate is saying these days. I'm just going to cover what makes Dick Grayson such a positive masculine role model. But if this video does help you with your dating life, then I'll gladly take credit for it. If you're interested in learning more about Nightwing, I highly recommend that you check out my video on what makes Dick Grayson such a lovable character. Now that that's out of the way, let's get into Nightwing Fear State. Right when Nightwing takes on a new responsibility as the protector of Bloodhaven, he finds out that Barbara Gordon's systems have been compromised. Hence, he leaves Bloodhaven to see what's going on in Gotham. Much to his surprise, he finds out that Gotham has been completely taken over by the Magistrate. To make a long story short, thanks to Scarecrow's new fear toxin, Gotham City goes into full crisis mode. The city surrenders full police and military control to the Magistrate, establishing a permanent police state. After trying to navigate through the shadows, Nightwing gets ambushed by a horde of Magistrate soldiers. Just as he's about to surrender, Batman swoops in and together they fight the soldiers. After Batman leaves to deal with Scarecrow, Nightwing rendezvous with Batgirl, Robin, Cassandra Cain, and Stephanie Brown to take down the anti-Oracle villain who compromised Barbara Systems. Later on, Nightwing helps Jason Todd clear his name and they work together to stop a drug operation. And after working to stop another Scarecrow operation in Bloodhaven, he gets doused with a fear toxin that makes him relive his past Christmases as a teenager. It really ended nicely as Dick Grayson got to reunite with the Bat family just in time for Christmas. Now that we more or less know the Nightwing Fear State story arc, let's dive into what makes Dick Grayson such a positive masculine role model. Number one, he puts his trust in people. A really refreshing aspect of Nightwing is that he believes in the best qualities in people. A lot of the time, the people who believe in others put their trust in them. The story started out with a really nice juxtaposition between Nightwing and the Magistrate. While the Magistrate was this overly militarized authority that imposed a bunch of rules on people for the sake of their safety, Nightwing doesn't operate like that. Sure, the Bat family has a pretty loose moral compass when it comes to vigilantism and secret identities, but the difference between Nightwing and the Magistrate is that he lets others be free. Instead of imposing strict curfews on people and using force on people when they speak out of terms, Nightwing is just a guy who intervenes when things get out of hand and he lifts people up so that they can reach their full potential. He doesn't force people to do what's right. Instead, he operates with this type of courageous trust that you don't see often. Heck, even Batman doesn't really trust his Justice League teammates. It's honestly really refreshing to watch a character like Dick Grayson. Instead of him bossing people around and manipulating others to kind of bow down to his ego, he lifts people up, puts his trust in them, and he lets them make their own judgment calls. The Magistrate is just not like that at all. They expect people to bow down to their authority as they think it's justified to disrespect people's privacy and their own autonomy. I don't know about you, but oftentimes I come across people who are pretty rigid in the sense that they demand a certain type of behavior out of people. Don't get me wrong, while it's good to set your own reasonable boundaries and communicate your needs, bossing people around to get them to do what you want doesn't really get the best reaction out of people in my experience. People like Nightwing, on the other hand, just develop their own intuition and take people as they are. He puts his trust in the people that he thinks will do what's right. Believe me, that's a much healthier way to approach life and dealing with people. Yes, it's pretty difficult in this day and age to take that leap of faith and trust others, but if you develop your own intuition and forgive the small things, you'll more than likely turn into a healthy and positive masculine leader like Nightwing. His ability to trust others was really put to the test when Barbara Gordon found footage of Jason Todd killing FBI agents. Now, I'll admit, I have not been keeping up with what's been going on with the Red Hood recently in the comics. It seems like he's dropped his killing policy and he's on the path to redemption as the Bat family is now on speaking terms with him. Personally, I find Jason Todd works best when he's an antagonist similar to the roles he's played in the Batman Under the Red Hood storyline and in the Batman and Robin series by Grant Morrison. 
I guess he really changed as Dick Grayson really put his trust in Jason despite how the evidence did not play to his favor. In the footage, some sort of drug kingpin paid for protection from vigilantes like the Red Hood. As the kingpin was going through the city in his limousine with his men, the Red Hood attacked and killed all of the mercenaries he hired. Unfortunately, it turned out that the mercenaries were undercover FBI agents. They were trying to bring the kingpin into custody. Now, I'll admit, if I was Nightwing, I would not give Jason the benefit of the doubt. He has a history of doing this sort of thing, so I definitely would not have believed him. But it turns out that Nightwing has much better intuition than I do. He meets up with Jason to see if his injuries match the injuries he should have sustained based on what he saw in the footage. After noticing that he didn't sustain the same bullet wounds as the Red Hood in the footage, he works with Jason to help prove his innocence. Hence, they work together to find the copycat Red Hood. After capturing the imposter, they find out it was a version of Clayface who was masquerading as the Red Hood. They learn it was all a part of the Kingpin schemes to get away and flee the country. Nightwing and Red Hood team up once again to stop the crime lord from flying off to another country to escape his drug trafficking charges. What makes this Nightwing and Red Hood story so special to me is that he managed to give Jason the benefit of the doubt when it was really difficult. This story showed that Nightwing doesn't just have the ability to believe in people, but he also has the ability to believe that they've changed. Man, talk about courageous trust. Now, I'm not saying that you should help out a friend who's been caught on camera doing something pretty egregious. After all, life is not a comic book or a work of fiction. The point is, choosing to believe in people and putting your trust in them despite knowing that they're not perfect is a really great quality to have as a healthy masculine leader. Which leads me to my next point. Number two, Nightwing drops his ego. What I find so interesting about Nightwing is that he walks the line perfectly. He's confident, yet he's not a jerk. He's capable, yet he's not full of himself. He can accomplish great things, and yet he does not let his ego get the best of him. A good example of this is when he gets Batman's help after being ambushed by the Magistrate. When he gets to Gotham to find out that there's an overly militarized police authority there, he quickly realizes that there's no shadows to navigate in. After getting caught, he fights off the Magistrate until he realizes that he cannot fight them by himself. Just as he's about to surrender, Batman shows up to give him a hand. Together, they take down the foot soldiers and they escape into the sewers. Now, here's where Nightwing's personality really shines. Instead of letting his pride get the best of him, he thanks Bruce for his help. Even though Batman reassures him that he could have taken them by himself, he still thanks him anyway. He also drops his ego when dealing with Jason Todd. After watching that footage of Jason, he did not rush to conclusions. Instead of dismissing Jason as a person who can never change, he gives him the benefit of the doubt and he investigates to find the truth about what really happened. In the last story arc where Nightwing is fighting off Scarecrow's men around Christmas time, it looked as though his pride got the best of him when he refused to get help from the rest of the Bat family. What actually happened was that he did not want to spend Christmas with everyone seeing that it was going to be his first Christmas without Alfred. For those of you who don't know, Alfred died in 2018's Batman issue number 77. The point is, in all three story arcs, Nightwing does not let his ego get the best of him. He does not put others down so that he can feel better about himself. He just tries his best to lift himself and others up. To me, this is a really underappreciated quality for a positive masculine leader. As we all know, pride has a tendency of sneaking up on us. Unlike most people, Dick Grayson keeps his ego in check by thanking people for their help, giving people the benefit of the doubt, and not taking things personally. Now, being brave enough to put your trust in others and dropping your ego are excellent qualities to have in a person, but in my opinion, if you're not capable, then it's next to impossible to become a masculine leader like Nightwing. I think one of the most overlooked features of Dick Grayson is his aggressive side. Yes, his anger issues are not nearly as bad as let's say Jason Todd's or Damian Wayne's, but his angry and violent side are pretty much still there. After all, he did lose his parents as an adolescent to a criminal, and he spends the rest of his life inflicting pain onto others who choose to do harm to innocents. What separates Dick from characters like Jason is that he has his dark side pretty much under control. Before the Red Hood and Nightwing go after the drug kingpin, Jason reveals that this mission is personal to him since his mother nearly overdosed on the drug that this crime lord was pushing on the streets. As a consequence of this, when the Red Hood and Nightwing capture the crime lord, Jason really let his anger get the best of him. 
As soon as he got his hands on the guy, Jason laid a beating on him so badly that Nightwing had to intervene and stop him. Now, not only did that moment show that Dick Grayson is a great friend and older brother to Jason, it also showed us that Nightwing can control his dark side. Nightwing is not a softie. He's shown time and time again that he's capable of fighting highly trained mercenaries like Deathstroke. His violent and angry side are still there, he just has it under control. Hence, if you want to be a strong and positive masculine role model like Nightwing, you gotta develop some sort of edge. Putting your trust in others and dropping your ego are great qualities to have in a person, but it means little if you do not have the capabilities to handle things when chaos comes around. Now, I'm not saying that you have to become an expert martial artist and break the law through vigilantism every single night. Doing things like building your skills and making positive contributions to your community will more than likely help you come off as a dude with an edge. All in all, Nightwing Fear State did an amazing job of highlighting why we love the characters so much. He's capable yet kind, he's confident yet he drops his ego, and he courageously trusts others as opposed to stripping away their autonomy. But what do you think? Do you think Nightwing is a positive role model? Do you think that Dick Grayson exhibits a healthy form of masculinity? Leave your thoughts in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe to Reverb Comics so that you do not miss out on our awesome content. Stay groovy.